some of us love the anonymity of doing voiceovers and some definitely don't like right. that part of it. Right. <laughs> like right. I love that. No, like, like if an Uber driver says like, what do you do? I, I just make up the most boring thing I can think of. I'm not the person. And, and, I, and I get into the Uber. I get into the Uber like this. Yeah. That's <laughs> all right. You're an American. I, that's what I mean. We know. We know. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Welcome to the virtual stage here at GalaxyCon. Thank you all so much for taking time out of the start of your weekend to come over here, hang out with all of us, have a good time. It is going to be a phenomenal 45 minutes here on the virtual stage here at GalaxyCon. There's a lot of very, very talented people, and I'm pretty sure that I could sit here for 45 minutes and name off all of the credits that they have in their resume, um, but I'm not going to do that because it would take too long because that's how talented they are. So let's go ahead, start bringing people here to the virtual stage. While you're at home, give a nice little clap for everybody coming to the stage. So first up, a very talented man, not just when it comes to voice acting, but also when it comes to music. Please welcome Eric Stewart. Hey. Hey, Eric. Welcome to the stage. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for asking, Real Breaking Nate. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing good. Let's go ahead and uh, keep people coming out here to the stage. Um, next up, you might have heard her as the voice of Nurse Joy or Mae Valentine from Yu-Gi-Oh. Please welcome Megan Hollingshead. Woo! Hi! Welcome, Thank Megan. You, you doing good? You. Well, yeah, feeling good. Great. Great. All right, let's, let's keep this train going. Uh, mm -hmm. Next up, you know him as... The professor. That's right. I'm saying the professor. The one and only Professor Oak, Stuart Zagnet. Hello there. Hello hey, there. Stuart. How you feeling? How you doing? I'm feeling great. I'm ready to talk to some fans and have a good time. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's continue this. Um, a fan favorite. Fan favorite, Bulbasaur. Who doesn't love Bulbasaur? Everybody, please welcome Tara Sands. Hi. I see Ooh. Eric shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> that, that like no, it's the answer to who doesn't love. No one does it. I thought maybe. Oh, oh, Eric doesn't love Bulbasaur. I love Bulbasaur. Hi, Everyone but Eric loves Bulbasaur. <laughs> oh, great. Great. <laughs> oh, maybe it was a Squirtle thing. It's yeah, fine. We're good. Yeah, okay. No, no. Eric loves Bulbasaur. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, coming to the stage, you may have heard him uh, voice uh, the gym leader, Blaine, Charmander, or one of my personal favorite Pokemon, Psyduck. Please welcome Michael Hagney. Woo! How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Nate. It's good to be here. I would prefer not to have a Bulbasaur hater on, but we can talk about <laughs> that later. So awkward. It's disturbing. Oh yeah. I've already been canceled. All I did was shake my head. <laughs> no, let's let's make this known now that Eric loves Bulbasaur. Eric loves Bulbasaur. It was, it was a face of contemplation. I misread it. It was funny, though. Let's go with that. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, uh, you know her as the original voice of Ash Ketchum and... She also did what possibly might be one of the hardest roles she has ever done. She did the anime Conan O'Brien. <laughs> Please welcome what? to the stage, Veronica Taylor. Yay. I brought a special thing for you. Times are tough, and so everybody needs a. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Wait. See how my things have grown. Because I got Pikachu. <laughs> wow. Everybody, welcome Pikachu to the stage. Happy birthday, Veronica. Pikachu. Thank you. Wow. Everyone in your own world, wherever you are, wish her a happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Veronica. Happy birthday. Let's make this about you guys. Happy uh, birthday to all of you. Yes, yes. So that, that's nice. How are, my you doing good, Veronica? Oh, yeah, for sure. Great. It's great to hear. Uh, you know, diving right into this, you know, we're coming up on the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. And who? That can't be right. Oh, oh. I'm like 28. How can that be? It doesn't seem like it, but yes, 25th anniversary. Um, did any of you expect 
the brand to be here 25 later or 25 years later and this big i mean we're talking on like a disney marvel dc star wars level i mean this this is a brand that's known worldwide and is still as popular today if not more popular than years ago um in, any takes on that did you guys expect it to be this big uh, no no not at the beginning heck nope. no you uh, should have was, seen the closets we were recording in. I mean, like, <laughs> but, but when, Nate, when I, we first I, started I, doing the the series, um, I you know I was doing the sessions, and it was it was it's a, another anime job. I, I didn't know anything about right. it. And one day I walked by a newsstand, and the newsstand had the latest issue of Newsweek, and the the headline, the front of the Newsweek was Ash and Pikachu, <laughs> and the headline was the Pokemon phenomenon, and I went. I'm in a phenomenon. I mean, yeah. you know, it's <laughs> yes, such, such a shock to me. Yeah. And I don't know how, how the rest of you feel. Well, but. Nate, I'll say this. In the beginning, probably not, because when we were all auditioning or even not getting a role in the beginning and then getting brought back in, like I was, um, it was another anime. But after a little bit of time, it became very obvious that it had the right formula. Based on some fan feedback, I you know whether it was going to last for another year or two, you could see that it had the right ABCs. It had characters mm -hmm. you could relate to. It had a moral to the story. It had humor. Um, mm -hmm. And and I really think, and especially I got it, one of the credits we didn't give Michael is, is one of the directors, writers, and producers of the show. Um, we had people giving us great things to say and do as well. So there, yeah. there was a lot of quality there. So to say, I can't believe it's that popular after so many years, I've got to say I'm on the fence about that because I thought that there was a lot of quality stuff with this and we weren't trying to reinvent the wheel. We were putting mm -hmm. together a show that the kids could relate to somebody, whether they liked the hero or the quirky villain or whatever mm -hmm. it was. The there nurse. was something, yeah, or the nurse, all the I time, the nurse the and nurse. the cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. and, and one other thing, it, it had us. I think I think the element yes. of of well, combined talents was a really nice touch because because we Japanese complemented each other. Okay, you, you know, very quickly when because uh, we had a I had a company with Larry Juris that that did uh, that redid, and I think that's Kathleen where I first met you on Gall uh, uh, on, on Gall no um Gall Gall Force Gall Force I was in that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that, so, so Norman Grossfeld, who I had known, had said, "Hey, do you, you know, do you want to try to do this show?" And I said, "Well, send it over." And I looked at it, and we were starting to do it. And I, I saw the first episode, and I remember saying to Larry, "I said, try to get paid up front because this yeah. thing is not." <laughs> Honestly, I mean, that's not just a story. I remember it. And I was just so wrong about that. But I never thought people would want computers in their homes. So I right. just was, yeah, you know, it was just, yeah. but I remember, I just thought this yeah. is, you know, 13 and out. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Also, you were writing, Michael, was really the best. And you bring such a tremendous sense of humor and classic humor. <laughs> well, but I think that made a difference. Look, that's different. very that's very very nice of you to say. Uh, uh, the thing is, I, I don't think it, people enjoyed it when I was we're on the phone saying, "Where's the next line?" Though I think this is a little revisionist. I, I remember think some that. Of you may I remember that. The result. The result. But that's very nice. Thank you. Thank well, you. Well, we always we always get credit as the actors for you know. Oh, you said this funny line. I mean, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, anything that Brock said, I say, well, maybe it's the delivery. Yeah, I'm sure I made you laugh, but you wrote it. It was yeah. alright. Yeah. But you know what? The show the show was was good. You know, the show was good when it came in. You know, I've worked on several anime shows, and obviously some are better than others. But Pokemon was a good show because of, of what Eric said. You know, it had nice stories, and I, I didn't see it at the beginning. But um, you know, the characters <laughs> were nice. They and it wasn't really violent, except you know the the, 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 battle. the attempt to destroy creatures that you enslave. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I it was no, it was nice. It's perfect. Me. It was nice. <laughs> It was, no, it was a nice show, and the quality of you could tell that there was a lot of thought in Japan put into the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the, the groundwork was laid in. You know, you, with TV show, you had the cards, you had the video games. You know, there was all these different aspects, and, and it created an entire world. So whereas a lot of times, you know, with an anime, you have just a TV show, or maybe it's just a video game or something like that. With this, you had everything that, that pretty much came together at the exact same time. 
So uh, I, I think that uh, attributes to a lot as well. N now, yeah. when you before the Pokemon anime debuted in the United States, was it pitched to you any specific way to understand what is going on here with this anime? I oh, just, I, not to me. Not to me. <laughs> I, I, have, I have probably the <laughs> earliest Pokemon story of all of these people because about six months before the show was even brought up to any of us, Norman brought me in to do a promo, a voiceover promo oh. for a commercial for a new thing that he was working on. And the line was, coming soon, Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had to say. And so I went into the studio and it was probably about six or eight people there who could not agree on how to pronounce Pokemon. Uh. So the session lasted for two hours and I came back the next day for another hour. Wow. Oh and, and we talked and I was like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. So I, I it was explained to me that there's this new, new show, whatever, something that was going, you know, with kids and this and that anime. Okay, great. But that was it. And then months later, it was like, would you like to come in and audition for this thing? And I was like, oh, now I remember how we were doing it. And I'm sure all of you can attest to the fact that it took us, what, a year before yeah. all of the directors could agree on how we said Pokemon? Remember, we had to go back yeah. and record everything. Yeah. The yeah. Pokemon to Pokemon, yeah. Yeah. We all yeah. had heard, if you had watched the news, it was the show that gave kids seizures in Japan. Like, yes. it, yeah. I didn't notice Pokemon. I didn't notice, oh, the seizure, seizure show. That was yeah. the show. show. I mean, we were very hard of anime. anime. Is that what we were? Eric, you couldn't make that drone. session. <laughs> Eric, you couldn't make that session less than an hour and five, so you get the extra half hour. You, I I'm tried. very disappointed. Working <laughs> it. That, that was actually a union gig. But anyway, <laughs> Stuart, you look like the most interesting man in the world today. Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. Yes. Well, I don't. Thank you. Always He's only yeah. the third most interesting man, though. I, <laughs> in the world? I don't know I do anything. No, not in this room, I don't <laughs> mean. <laughs> Oak's getting a little classy in his old age. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Now, Thank you. now you all have been uh you all have been voice acting and acting for, for a very long time and, and you all have very long resumes and are very talented. Um, did you all know from a very young age that acting is what you wanted to get into? Was this your path that you always wanted to take? Well, for me, yeah. When I was five, I was in my first play, and that's when I decided I wanted to be an actor. Wow. So, yeah, and then I uh, did all the plays in my elementary school, high school. I have a bachelor's in acting from college and a master's from grad school. Wow. Uh, my, These are my really are short answers, right? And then, yeah. yeah. Mine is very similar. I think when I was five or six years old, um, I, w I wanted to I, – I, we, we used to watch uh, – before anybody else's time, Jerry Lewis movies. And I used to set the living room up like an obstacle course and see how many pratfalls I could do. Oh. Pieces of furniture I could <laughs> fall over. And, and, so and, and wow. I, I was in plays from, from like Sunday school to grammar school and the high school. And nobody in my family was in any sort of entertainment, but I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And mm. I majored in speech and theater, but I wanted to be a you know, dramatic, actor and then in in college i did my first musical and ironically most of my good paying gigs in the business have been in big broadway musicals so yeah. hey that's awesome you know that's uh that's that's my journey yeah. <laughs> part of my journey that's so cool right. anybody uh, else want to uh, mu music was for the, my passion I, eighth grade i was in my first band um i loved performing and uh, I used to work at a tennis club during in the summertime. I taught tennis, and one of the members there owned a recording studio in New York and said, we're looking to hire somebody um, as an assistant. Would you like to come in? And I thought it was going to be a music studio. It turned out it was uh, casting for voiceovers and mm -hmm. production for voiceovers. And so I learned everything about the business mm -hmm. there and then realized that I could be uh, a performer and also be on stage singing oh so sensitive love songs and also be like the voice <laughs> of the tidy bowl man and not be recognized for that and so it made perfect sense to be a voice actor um and so i sort of stumbled into it and now i can't imagine not being one i've been yeah. doing it for over 30 years so yeah yeah, yeah. i tried not yeah. to be an actor i i always loved it but i tried uh I thought I could do other jobs like uh, I didn't even know what, but I worked in finance for a while and production and I tried to be a stage manager, but I kept coming back. I always loved acting. It was, it was my favorite. Um, and yeah, once I hit voice acting, which was thanks to Michael Hagney, his, uh, 
his girl, then girlfriend, now wife, said, uh, hey, Michael's looking for actors. Do you do voice acting? And I was like, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then Michael basically taught me how to do it in my audition. So, <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't think so. I probably owe you residuals. <laughs> no, 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 nothing. Nothing. You owe me nothing. <laughs> yeah. Tara, Tara, you, Tara yeah, you've been acting I, forever. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it's like, like Veronica too. Like I just knew, I knew what I wanted to do there. Uh, I always tell people if there's anything else you want to do, go do it. Uh, Cause this right. was it for me. I was, yeah. I was set. I was, you know, driven. Living yeah. the dream. I yeah. was, uh, I was from a circus family. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I had a terrible fall once Baby in Toledo. I'll never forget it. And uh, so then I thought, let me get on the other side of the camera. And uh, I still have a limp, but I'm glad that I changed. Oh you know, I, I, I kind of believe that. So, I believe that. It's all true. I love that we haven't seen each other for so long and like nothing has changed. That sounds bad though, I doesn't it? I'm glad changed. that we haven't seen each other for no. so long. No, 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 <laughs> Wow. It's as if we were arguing though, just yesterday. We've been together for so long. Yes. Nothing. All right. Is right. We I'm have... still stuck on the put down, put down the fire baton and picked up the pen for you, <laughs> Michael. What's that? From your circus days. <laughs> yes. Put down the fire baton. <laughs> That's right. That's pen. right. Yeah. And, but he looks May so take great in a onesie. Question. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I'm glad you're here, Michael. I'm glad. Thank you. Here. Somebody yeah. is. I'm glad. This is nice to know. Two of we us. have a I'm lot. I'm glad to be anywhere. We have a lot of people watching right now. So let's okay. go ahead and jump into right. some fan questions. Okay. Um, Pokemon Project? The first movie. Uh, yeah. What is your favorite yeah. Pokemon project you've been involved in? That's from first, Aaron. First movie. Oh, that was my couch, not my butt. First um, movie. I heard the it. first movie, because Nurse Joy really? got a broad. I got I got a broad acting. Yeah, movie. she had a, a journey. I fainted. I did things. I was in disguise. Yeah, the much that bigger. Was, didn't we? Do we do that? Was that the, the Brill Building where we did that uh, recording? Yeah, like a big yes. sound stage. with the Mike. The, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was no, in that, that big was amazing. Room, right? That was amazing. That was really nice. Really wild. That, that was like it made us feel like we were doing like some big Hollywood thing. It was and exciting. And the premiere yeah. was at the Zig yeah. Zone. I have the jacket. I still have the jacket. Oh, I can no, tell you. I got away at some point. We I don't let me tell you. I, I just had the jacket altered <laughs> for for my son Jack because remember the sleeves are like <laughs> eight feet long. They were like, yeah. where yes. I should go get the jacket. I'm looking to get mine altered too. So tell me later on. Tell I'll me tell you, and that. it's a fortune. But anyway, okay. Yeah. Mm. Just for the record, uh, I didn't get any jackets. Oh. <gasps> You did. You also, have, you have Oak, Oak also was not in the first movie, so I, I, I think oh, that was in the first movie. I have to say, very quickly, my favorite uh, Pokemon project was the, was the Christmas album. I love that. That was fun. <laughs> that was really fun. I know nothing about you, that. Remember no, Veronica? I don't even want to tell, tell that story. I'll tell that elsewhere. Some other Someone time. just wrote me about the Pokemon <laughs> Christmas Bash song. They just, they, just yesterday I got an email about that. Yeah, there you go. That was like Renegade recording at its best. Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. Was, like, it, was it official? Was it a licensed Pokemon? Yeah, yeah. Right. We all worked yeah. on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and they, and they, and they, and we didn't work on it. We didn't make any money, but we worked on it. But right. you know, yeah, what that's true. No. Is that I called around to like Virgin Mega Store and all these record stores in New York to say, oh, do you have Pokemon Christmas Bash? As if like just trying to make sure it was on the shelves and mm -hmm. trying to get it. It didn't really work, but I really, I called Really one friend. person calling a store didn't. <laughs> where, where she was, was able to disguise her voice fantastically. Yeah, yeah, we just in with Ash. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah. Weren't they sold at yeah. Kmart? Was that where they were? The record, uh, <laughs> the, uh, wasn't that 2002, four, something like that? Six, I think it was like 1896. It seems like forever ago. I mean, it was like a long time ago. Was like I was 10 years ago, like so don't ask me. Yeah. I was talking on one of these phones. You know, hello. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> great on my big troller. Yeah, it's, it's on Amazon. They, they're still selling. I tried to buy them too. It's called Koch Records. They, uh, anyway, sorry, Nate. Yeah. Right. So, Nate, you actually thought you'd get more than like three questions in this 45 minutes. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. You guys keep going. You guys keep going. Uh, you want to go ahead and move on to the next question? Sure. Yes. All right. Let's, let's yeah, see what not? we got next here. Uh, this is from Tanner. What inspired you? Uh, inspired you to. What inspired the voice of your character? Uh, 
I, I got a quick answer. So Brock was my Casey Kasem. When I was uh, in fifth grade, my favorite show uh, was uh, G-Force, Battle of the Planets, which was an anime. And uh, um, Casey Kasem played the main character, Mark. And uh, I could do his voice as a young kid. And so when asked to read for the, uh, the role of a 15-year-old boy, I thought, well, I will just go to my Casey Kasem. Um, it's sort of like Shaggy without all the pot. Um, and that's what I was doing, you know? Um, and then with James, um, I thought of him as the other brother of the Crane brothers, uh, Niles, uh, Frazier, and James. I went oh. to a private wow. school. I went to a really funky private school that played sports <laughs> against really obnoxious private schools. And so I was emulating all the guys in the blue blazers and khaki pants that we'd play sports against. Hey, that would be cro like, croquet if, or something. And right? if you dress like that, that's cool. But if you went to school <laughs> at the same time I did and dressed like that, not cool. So I, that's where I got my inspiration. From yeah. Those guys. Wow. Interesting. Well, uh, I think I think Psyduck, I I vaguely remember, <laughs> and the whole thing about memory is a whole issue, which is whatever, because I think sometimes we remember things differently. But I think Eric, I, you know, told me, hey, why don't you do like a Psy? Because I would jump in. That's a whole other story we won't get into of yeah, why. Yeah, I but I said the no, whole, no, I, I was like, ay, ay, ay. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. And you made right, right, yeah. I, th I, I, I think I, that was it because yeah. I don't remember how the original one. It sounded similar, you know. I think from but, the Yiddish theater, I gave you that. Yes, you know, where we yes. Yeah. You and Molly <laughs> Pecan and Kova yes. Felchu and everybody yeah, yeah. is in there together. I gave you the Second Avenue, that, right? That, that, yeah. that, that, that's it. But also, we had to match the voices to what was originally in the right. Japanese, and yeah. then kind of it went off from there. Right. My yeah. brother was ten at the time too, so I remember recording his voice and saying. No, this is how a ten-year-old sounds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I could play the part, you know. After I had gotten it, and then had to keep re-auditioning, and then was replaced by a child, and then re-auditioned, and then. Oh my it. god! Wow. Anyway. Wow. I so I I knew nothing about the anime. We uh, obviously the Japanese uh, version wasn't going to help me because there, there's no there's no real direct translation and sound they, they, it sounds mm -hmm. different so they just they just put up the picture of this professor on the screen and i'm looking at him so i just pulled something out of the air because i used to play a lot of old men in college when i was like in my 20s so i i, I could sort of put on a, a kind of a mature thing and then i i did that without even thinking about it before i knew it it was there and it, it got refined over the first season Right. To what it became. And, you know, it was it was so new to me that when I go in for sessions, they would play back my audition tape to remind me of what I did. Right. And it took a few times for it to lock Stay in. Stay on the voice. Stay on the yeah. voice. Yeah, and yeah. finally, I, I did a one of the video games and one of the executives from Nintendo was in the booth. So I'm doing the tracks and he stopped me and he and he cuts on the phone and he doesn't he doesn't speak much English. And he goes. No, 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 more Oki, and, <laughs> and, and I'm I'm trying to figure out what does he mean, and yes. I, and he meant like the the crack in the voice. That's the Okiness, yeah. and and it it actually he actually reminded me what I needed to do. So this man wow. who didn't speak English actually coached me to to lock in the the yeah. voice, and then I then I had it forever. So and there's the secret of voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was actual oak in your throat, but I guess now it was just acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah was, little oak chips. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oak loss. It would play do. us the original Japanese. Like the first day I was there, I wasn't playing Bulbasaur, but I was playing oh. another role. And they said, "Hey, can you try this green guy?" Uh, it, he sounds like this, and they played the Japanese where he said Dane. They said, but say Bulbasaur. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll try. But like the name sometimes wouldn't translate directly. So it'd be that was a two syllable name in Japanese. So that's why it, he says Bulbasaur, sir, because there were four lip flaps usually. <laughs> like, yeah, we yeah, were just playing flaps, around, just yeah. trying to make the lip flaps work. Like, that's probably yeah. why you said Sai Yai Yai because Story there were like mind. all these. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of flaps. Yeah, we wouldn't. I don't think we edited. I mean, later in later shows that I worked on, we would edit the flaps. But in the wow. beginning, there wasn't any, and that's why. Yeah. If you, you know, yeah, in the beginning, it was like, no, yeah, make it fit. the yeah. funny yeah. line, great read, but make it fit. Yeah. Do yeah. you guys yeah. remember Michael's famous note? <laughs> remember the letters D Y B. Yeah. Do your best. Yeah. 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 It's I've right. written this amazing line that's never gonna fit. Please. Yes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I remember peaks and valleys. Keep yeah, the peaks, peaks and valleys. And valleys. Peaks and valleys. That I remember. And that was great. We're just going to do one more for safety. But yeah, yes. everybody does that, right? In case everything blows up, this one will re, you know, will we'll survive. We'll put this one in a different area. <laughs> Maddie must have right. loved that. Secure <laughs> area. I never thought of that. Like you're going to archive it in the vault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're here, okay? Yeah. Psychology. Right. And then Remember, Maddie Blaustein always, it doesn't get any better than that. I said to Ron like this, unfortunately, that. that's true. I, <laughs> <laughs> I still say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it get any better? Oh, my gosh. I got it. Okay, so that's a verified memory. I do remember that. Maddie would lean against the wall in the booth after she delivered the line and then go, doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> that is true. The leaning against the booth. I remember that. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my God. No, I had forgotten know. that. No. But you know, the thing is, is that we worked really hard and we didn't have a lot of time for laughs while we were there. Like we worked, we got in, we just got the stuff done and get out. Right. And it's just really amazing yep. that um, I think when you were saying, Stuart, how it, it had a lot to do with us as the cast, mm -hmm. but I think what more to the point, it was that we all gave 100% and wanted this to be the best, yeah. regardless of what this show was about, what we knew of it, anything right. like that. We all had the same dedication. And I think that's one of the things that made it rewarding to work on and perhaps why it lasts till today. And, you know? and what, what's interesting too is that you know we worked a lot of times it was alone or like with an engineer and that was it or maybe there was yeah. one other person right, in the room yeah. so you, so you didn't have that that immediate gratification that you have from a live performance uh, you know on stage and all and obviously all of us have been on that stage as well um, and so you don't know what's working you don't know That's what's right. making people feel and think and right. until we were able to do conventions until we were able to have that live interaction right and that's mm -hmm. something that I, I mean beyond the financial stuff and beyond the uh, the, the the medical stuff that we all are obviously dealing with trying to keep ourselves safe, but like the lack of connection as a performer on every level is this is wonderful that we have this uh, this this platform to do this. Sure. Mm -hmm. But it just reminds me that like, goodness, I miss the conversations with fans one on one to be able sure. to hear like. You, you know, you made a difference or you made me laugh or I was going through some tough times and people think, oh, it's just a cartoon. Come on. No, the stories we have heard one-on-one oh. -on -one uh. one help you get through like, man, that was a tough session or what am I doing? Is this even right. worth you know, pursuing? And we don't have that right now. And it's and it really is amazingly painful, at least well, for me, well, to not have that. The community oh, does love all. you all. The community loves you all and appreciates a lot of uh, all of you. And you know, speaking for myself, you know, I was a kid back in the 90s and now I'm in my early 30s. And a lot of people are, are going back and, and rediscovering Pokemon again that they grew up with. So, right. you know, if, you know, whereas Pokemon kind of used to just be a kid's thing, you know, early right. on, it's not a kid's thing anymore. No, it, it no. is. For, it is for everybody. It is for all ages. We have moved past that. This is just for kids. This is for everybody now. Right. And you all played a, a very important role in, in a lot of people's lives. And, and um, I want to thank you for that. Mine well, included. Thank you. So. Well, well now good. you're well, just to understand. You're starting to understand the jokes that we put in there that were double entendres <laughs> that were for your parents, yeah. so that when they were drinking to go see the movie, they could go. That James is funny. He's funny, yeah. right? Because, <laughs> right. But I have to say that everybody here, and you know, as I don't want to say I've worked on a lot of shows. I worked on some shows, but and you know, sometimes the actors will do the lines. They come in and do the lines. They're looking at you know whatever. But everybody here uh, would always would say. Let me do that again. I, I think I can do. I have another thing, you know, which yeah. a lot. Some people don't do. They want to get it in, and can I get it past you, you know? And and nobody here was was ever like that. And uh, that was that was great. They always wanted to. I'll do it once more. Let me or let me try something a little different. And that that was that was good. You know. You all definitely gave it a hundred and ten percent. They really uh, did. Let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is from Kelsey. What are some good stories about how families or perhaps your kids have grown up knowing Pokemon? Uh, uh, well, the, the best thing that happened for me is what the first movie that I was in, we used to do premieres in, in, a, real, in a real movie theater. So I think it was maybe, at, what, was, what was the one on, uh, what, which one? Ziegfeld. Ziegfeld. Ziegfeld, yes. 
So my so my son, who's about five, is sitting next to me, right? And he he knew I did this, but this is the first time he's watching a movie. So he's watching the movie, and he really had great concentration. He's staring at the screen, and all of a sudden, Oak comes on, and he, and Oak starts to speak, and my son does this. He goes. <laughs> and he just stares at me because he knows that's that's his dad's voice and i i was like over the moon it was like that was the best moment Aww. was watching his reaction you know and uh i it's always been it's been a joy all the time whenever whenever i meet fans at the cons i don't know how what you guys have felt but to have someone come up to you and say you were my whole childhood or or can i hug you <laughs> i mean it's just this sense of uh, unabashed uh, love that comes out. It's, it really, I, I, I can't even just put it into words. And I feel like I have to uh, respect and honor that because they're giving right. back something that we never got to, got to experience when we were just recording them. Yeah. So. My, right. my two daughters always ignored the fact that I was in it. They thought daddy just did funny voices all the time. The, <laughs> the most, True. the most memorable story that I can tell is not about my family. I'll try to do the reader's digest condensed version, yeah. <laughs> but we all know it's me and I talk a lot. So, um, I was at a convention in Florida and a young woman came up to me probably in her thirties. And she said to me, Hey, you probably don't remember me, but when I was in like fifth grade, I wrote you an email with some questions. And you responded and you answered them. And I just need to tell you a story. I was a new kid in school. I had no friends. Mm. I'm going to get choked up telling the story. And, uh, and uh, I thought if I could get someone famous like you to answer some questions and I could tell the story in class, I would, I would get friends. And so she wrote me this, you know, five little questions. And I wrote her back. This is long before like Facebook and all stuff. So I don't even know what these people look like. Right. Just sending an email after my website and um she said i told the story and all of the people in my all my 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 uh, classmates thought i was the coolest <laughs> because i had gotten a, a response from brock and james that it helped me make friends and she said uh i have the the thing that you did i have the interview that you did would you autograph it for me oh, wow. and i was like <laughs> <laughs> um and i was like what are you doing here she's like oh uh, my 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 uh, my fiance is an artist here, and I'm I produce this and that. And she was like this, like involved in the business, and and obviously had come out of this shell and become not not thanks to me, but just the fact that that made like that the, to me was the greatest story right there. That's you forget wonderful. sometimes how your your five minutes with someone can make a difference. And and I know a lot of people in our position who, for some f strange reason, for 15 minutes become famous, um, who don't who take that for granted. And you should never do that. You know, just because someone's asked you the same question that the, the last 50 people have asked you in line, that's their moment. They don't know that. Give them that moment because you might make a difference. So that's my story. Absolutely. I beautiful. can't top that. <laughs> yeah, Eric, you really made it uh, kind of yeah. sorry. Next hard question. For us to say sorry, well, I thought mine was pretty good. It was. It was Stuart. It was Stuart. It was good. Mine was the Hallmark special. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Veronica's daughter uh, grew up knowing Pokemon. Right. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, she was born at the end of the first season because we took that break at like close to Christmas. And that's when you have children. Yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> been very well timed. He was. I mean, she's always been perfect. And, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. So basically, um, I think she knew Ash's voice when she was born, and um, and then she's just gone on to be my constant companion. So it's been pretty <laughs> okay. great. She's and uh, awesome. yeah, I mean, it's certainly. I think for me, Pokemon changed the way I looked at the world, as having a child does too, where you you're able to look beyond yourself and how your actions impact others. And Pokemon, especially playing Ash, how he's so positive and how he would look at any challenge um, with how can we get out of this? He would never let it stop him. And I think that um, that definitely influenced every single part of my life. From mm. that. That's good. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next question. Sure. Uh, from <laughs> Tanner, what type of gym leader would you be? <laughs> I would be a, a really one. huge, bulky one. I'd be a breeder. Really I'd be a breeder, not a gym leader. 
right? Is that what I always wanted? To, isn't that what Brock always wants to be as a breeder? He wants to be a breeder. He is. Right. A breeder. I would say like a Gold's <laughs> Gym. Pro yeah. Probably be. <laughs> <laughs> I would this be like in Venice or something. I think I have a lot of members. Yeah, that's right. Outdoor. I would say you want you want to play. Or whatever, whatever you want to do, it's fine. What, but do you mean like a tough one or like a water type? Like, is there like is I there think a these are real question? None of us know the answer because we don't know what kind of gym leaders there are. <laughs> it's been a minute, no. guys. It's been a minute. So terrible. We played gym leaders, right? All of us. Every week, or I don't know, not every week, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, I'd like I I'd like to say a winner, but that's very pithy, and that's not true. It's not. It doesn't matter if you win. It's how you play the battle. Someone, yeah. someone has to chime in and tell us: Did gym leaders battle, or gym leaders just? Yeah. 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 Yeah, you go out and fight, and I'll, I'll be I'll be here. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. You, were yeah, yeah you were back at the hospital, Megan, <laughs> taking care of the, the victims, and yeah, that was different. Out. You didn't have time to watch the matches. And I was I entertaining the group. shiny things, so I don't even know what was going on in the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, All right, that was no, a terrible yeah. answer. Next question. Yeah. It was Let's no, see if we do better. <laughs> yeah, let's try harder, guys. All right. This is from oh, Hello yeah. Two One Three. Do How do you decompress after a long day? Video games. Mm. I'm Video a gamer. Games. I'm a gamer. Netflix. Terry Gross. Netflix. Ooh, Terry yeah. Gross is good. Yeah. I, I haven't had much compression recently, so I don't have to. <laughs> no, no need to deep. No. Take, take no. the socks no. off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my diabetic socks. <laughs> do you think people expect us to watch? anime and know it but it's like if you work in a donut shop you probably don't go home and eat donuts right so, yeah. so as much as i hear about so many great animes and i would love to watch them i can't do it right. to relax which is right. a shame. yeah, yeah. We, but a lot of anime fans do like donuts that's true <laughs> that is true so it's the crossover so i don't jelly know jelly filled donuts there we go. Nice segue. Let it go. Nice segue right there. Oh, oh, my gosh. Gosh. It's so funny you mentioned donut shop. I actually used to work in a donut shop, and I can say that that's the last thing I wanted to eat when I went home. Right. Was, was oh, donuts. So that's very true. Very true. Yeah. Uh, good question. Good question. Very good next, question. Next up. Good question. This is from Sally. Have you ever done your character voice in real life? Oh, so, maybe, <laughs> so maybe like you're out and about and you see like a fan and maybe you do the voice or something like that? No, restaurants. With my, When my kids were little, I would order food in a voice. And the rule was I had to stay in voice throughout right. the meal because oh. I didn't want to embarrass the, the, the server. So I'd have to speak like that. And so uh, she's now my ex-wife and you can understand why. <laughs> <laughs> all right um, yeah i we definitely do weirdo voices but not necessarily a character that i've played like accents we do all the time and yes. um stuff like that but not i don't ever like call up and order as ash a pizza or something i don't you do should. that you should. that'd be super weird. you should uh, yeah, okay. yeah. I've been asked by friends to call other like, oh, like family members, yeah. you know, like you know, for Christmas that I do. things. So yes. I've, I've done that. Yeah. I've got, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure I've been guilty of doing it in public. Uh, probably way too much. My if my son catches me, he usually rolls his eyes yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> he's twenty twenty four. He's over it now. So no. <laughs> you mean like good. standing around doing the voice, hoping someone will recognize you? Oh, yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good. I like that. that. <laughs> Right here. <laughs> sometimes I, sometimes I feel like it's fine. <laughs> well, sometimes it's fun to like to like surprise them because invariably I'd say ninety nine percent of the time the reaction is pretty intense. So, um, so if if I want just as a hoot, I'll I'll do it because they don't expect this this old old guy to walk up and and be Professor Oak. So. And a lot, and sometimes I don't believe. You expect me. a young woman, I guess. <laughs> I, I would, it would be nice weird for change, but yeah. you know. Well, it's funny. Like some of us love the anonymity of doing voiceovers, and some definitely don't like right. that part of it. Right. <laughs> like I love that. No, like 
like if an Uber driver says like, what do you do? I, I just make up the most boring thing I can think of. I'm not the person. <laughs> and, and, who I, and I, I get into the I Uber. Am. I get into the Uber like this. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. that's right. that's right. We know. We know. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. He gets upgrades on, on airplane flights. That's um, right. That's hey, I've been upgraded too. Yeah. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ooh, try that. I, Wait, this is a story. Story. I'm all we in. Have, we don't have time for that story, but it's a good one. <laughs> well, next I need, time. I need to work that too when we can fly again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next question. Yes. Real breaking Nate. <laughs> yeah. uh, from Pokemon Trainer, what advice would you give new and aspiring voice actors? Acting classes. Mayor. I think Start off as an actor. Next. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's the thing. You want to be able to push yourself. So you take acting classes so you knew, you understand how to create a scene, how to do uh, partner work, talking and listening, what your objective is. And then um, if you even if you read children's books and you start narrating with different voices and then you pop in and out, giving the characters a reason and then trying to keep that character going through that a children's book because they're generally short. And take every opportunity you can to act, whether it's with your friends, with improv, whatever, every opportunity. Don't feel like intimidated by any of it. Just do it. Just do it. And, and you and know, I, just, just watch go where it goes. Like you you start off doing one thing and it, it takes you in a whole other direction. I, I guarantee you that if you study acting and um, study, do some breath work or read some children's book to, to, to some actual children. children. Yeah. You're, and you know, will, like not different things will happen. Well, um, yeah. there's that. Yeah. I, I will say there, there's people like y young people who are really just starting out and, and they sort of have this, this, uh, uh, they, they want to be on stage. They want to perform, but they're shy. And mm -hmm. I say to them, you can't go out in front of people and also hide in the back at the same time. If you're going to be out there, you have to give it everything you have. So, so if you're going to make the choice, then make it big and 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 make your presence known. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're you're just going to drop into the background anyway. So, and I know from this group of people, I mean, we don't just do cartoon voiceovers. I mean, like I do, you know, industrials and audiobooks and all of these people. We did like vo when you say you want to be a voice actor, it's everything that involves using your voice. And so. Uh, a lot of the fans will say, oh, I want to do what you're doing. I want to work in, in cartoons. It's like, now you might know me from that, but that's not the majority of what I do every day. And it's never been. Even when we were working on the show all the time, there were other voiceover things that were also going on. So you have to have a sort of a wider view of what being a voice actor is about, whether it's audiobooks or industrial narrations. You know, I do things for auto industry, stuff like that, training video voiceovers, which are really exciting. But yes, there's that too. I love doing those, you know. You have to expand your mind a little bit when it comes yeah, to right. yeah. the job opportunities. Yeah, exactly. All right, next question. Uh, this is from Red. What has Pokemon meant to you? That could be a difficult question and a long, long answer, possibly. Long answers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's weird. Again, we had no idea what we were getting involved in, and it I don't think it was until I started meeting the fans that I got it. And I, I realized like I was kind of their babysitter. Like when, when their parents were like, we can't handle it, go sit in front of the TV and whatever, you know, we were just like these cogs in this Pokemon wheel. I don't want to discredit us, but <laughs> we represented this thing to the, and you don't always get to, to meet the manifestation of like this time in your life. So we can represent right. that to people. And that's so cool. I feel like a bartender a lot of the time, like at a convention, they'll be like, my parents were going through a divorce and I was watching this season and this is what, and, and they just need to talk to someone about that. And right. hopefully we're a good receptacle for that. So it's been really meaningful for me to just meet people and see this bigger thing that, that I was a part of. It is pretty amazing to feel that we are part of something that is such a big part of pop culture history, but also that to me is also a meaningful project. And I mean, we don't get to hang out with these people that much as a group. Some of us live closer to each other than others do, but like these are my friends for, for so many years, it's ridiculous. I mean, you put us back in a room together, a virtual room together. We haven't really been in a room together like this for many, many years. And you, yeah. you know, it's like being in a dinner party with us. So it's like yeah. that's, you know, we were we have been through 
marriages and divorces and births of children. I mean, like everything. It's um, it's amazing. I you know uh, you're talking uh, you know Veronica uh, talking about her daughter. You know my older daughter and 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 her daughter. They were born like a month Thank apart. You. Like we yeah. went through the, the, the whole thing at the same oh. time. So yeah. so it's like it's like you know I, I think Pokemon is more than just it was a fun show. I worked on. It's like right. I, I am humbled by the fact that I was part of something so cool with so many cool people. So yeah, yeah, and and I, and I, I've been a stage actor for a long time, and you just go from show and part to part, and you move on. But Pokemon has been a continuum in my life since we started doing it, and and I am very grateful for that. That it's an identity that will be a part of me forever. And um, who, how, how bad could that be? So. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful right. for it. it. It's it's changed me, and it's um, it it's something I'll I'll be always very very grateful for. Yeah, no, I mean, no. I got to do a, a a TV series, a movie, and an album, and uh, it was uh, <laughs> you know I I was about to say it's a lot of fun. I you know we had laughs. Yeah. But it was a lot of work, too. I mean, totally. it was probably in a way more fun to look back on, sort mm -hmm. of in a way. Uh, but it was something that, you know, you would say to people, I would like, like, oh, what do you do? I, you know, like, oh, I work on this. I would always say, oh, I work on this show. I don't know if you've heard of it, Pokemon. You know, yeah. of course they yeah. always had, you know, <laughs> and sometimes like, oh yeah, my daughter watches that. I hate that show. Yeah. Literally, the guy sent this to me. But um, it was it was a thing, you know, and it, it, even though, you know, I, it's not important that you work on something that's a big hit or not. I mean, it's, it's what you're doing, but it was nice to be a part of that big, a, a cog, as you said, Tara, that's what it is. We were all cogs in that kind of machine, not in a bad way, but um, it, it was fun to be in that. It's better than not being in it, right? Yeah. Yes, and, and I, I will say the quality control that went into those those years when we were doing it was enormous. And that's also one of the reasons why the show has staying power, because it was well-written, it was well-performed, it was well-directed. It just was produced, the quality was always there and nobody ever stopped doing that kind of work. That's and, right. you know, and to be part of that uh, is a great thing. It's just, cause, I, cause I'm proud of the work that we did, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For me, it, it, I mean, Pokemon changed my life. It launched um, a voiceover career, which I didn't know was a thing. Um, and I'm so grateful for it. And I'm also really humbled to have been a part of the thing that, um, that not only changed all of our lives, but has changed so many fans' lives and has become this great enjoy uh, uh, phenomenon that's been enjoyed by many, many people all over the place. And that's just that's just pure luck that I get. Yeah, we all got lucky, that's yeah. right. We all got lucky, yeah. And it is an amazing thing to be, I mean, we had eight years on this show that were just, it's incredible to have a job that lasts <laughs> that long. Um, and I also think the, the opportunity to travel we're all on a Pokemon journey in a way <laughs> and how our paths kind of came together while we were working and continually cross. We've been lucky to be companions on this journey. And along the way, I've been able to meet people around the world and to see how Pokemon has brought all of us together with our best qualities of that positivity, of friendship, of understanding that we're all the same and everyone wants that um, what's best for one another. And in Pokemon, we help each other, and through that, we all win. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned about this and what I've, I've taken uh, from working with you all, for sure, and then from all the people I've met. It's been extraordinary. So I do hope that we get to continue on, um, stay healthy, <laughs> but continue here, here. on. There's so many more stories to be told and to be written, and we're just a small part of it. I love oh, that. Best birthday girl ever. Yeah. Yeah. But seriously, to, I mean, to everyone who's tuning in today, thank you. And to you yeah, guys, nice. thank you. Yes, you thank you. Such an impact. And for all of us in this crazy, chaotic time to carve out this hour, to sit for a minute and forget everything, but just be with us <laughs> with this weirdness. And it's been quite an honor to have this time with all of you. So thank you. And and thank thank all of you for for helping shape a lot of people's childhoods and and continuing to do so. You know, a lot of a lot of younger kids right now are going back and rewatching or watching it for the first time on yep. Netflix. Go or back and like watch that. it from the beginning. Go watch right. it from the beginning. 
And yeah. in, in honor of the, the 25th year, I only realized that it was the 25th year when I saw Pikachu's dancing on the Macy's Day's Parade. I don't know if anybody else saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I've yeah. started next year uh, in January. Uh, I've been working on a, a podcast about the original uh, show Ooh, because I saw wow. that there were some people involved. So yeah. I hope that all of you will be uh, will, will come on the show. Uh, but for the people watching now, if you write to me at Michael at Original Pokemon with an A, <laughs> dot com. Original <laughs> Pokemon. So it, it sounds like I'm, it, I explained that in the first episode. It's just to get people. Uh, if you email me, I'll send you a link for a, a sneak preview of, uh, of the nice. podcast. Very Whoa. cool. Oh, Very what is that? Awesome. Bring it down. It's, it's, let me write it, say it again, because I don't know if I, it's Michael at Original Pokemon, with an A, dot com. Okay. I'm writing down too. I got it. And I'll be in touch with all of you. Oh, please, call me first. Call me first. Unfortunately, that is our time for today. So I want to thank you all for taking this. I know, right? I feel like we could we could continue on for hours and hours and hours. We've only uh, touched the tip of the iceberg here. But thank you all so much for, for taking time out to, to join all of us here um, at, at the virtual stage. Um, I appreciate it. Is there anything that anybody wants to promote, social media, before we head out? Everybody who's here has already found us on social media. I, I would assume so. Yeah. I would assume so. Yeah. But, uh, easy to find. <laughs> but you can find it, me on Cameo, too. There you go. I'm so Yeah. Yep. And I usually hang out on Sackett Street and 4th Avenue between 4th and 5th. I just I'm gonna, have nothing I'm going to look for you because that's yeah. not far yeah, from yeah, that's right. the gas, the, Where the gas station used to be. <laughs> oh, oh, bro, so. Everybody, <laughs> go visit Michael. Oh go God, visit yeah. Michael. Um, <laughs> Please. You I can got still... Nothing. You can still purchase your one-on-ones as well as your autographs at galaxycon.com if you want the fun to continue. Once again, thank you all for being here and everybody thank out you. there watching. Thank stay you. safe and uh, and stay stay awesome. Wear a mask. Yes. Right. Good job. Right. Real breaking, Nate. Bye. Bye. Bye.